to you live from the Vegas Video Network Studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's golf and other four-letter words. And now your host, you've heard him on ESPN, Fox Sports, and Sirius XM Radio, Mr. Dennis Silvers. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We uh, brought in a busload uh, for the show tonight because we've got a very, very, very special guest uh, that's uh, going to be on the show tonight. Anyway, welcome to this edition of Golf and Other Four-Letter Words. I am your host, Dennis Silvers. Very, very happy to uh, be here. And we're getting close to the holiday season, so I hope everybody's getting out and having a good time and doing a little holiday cheer and buying some gifts and, and so on and so forth. And I will be giving you uh, an address pretty soon if you want to send me some gifts. Uh, that is... That is certainly all right. Anyway, for those of you watching uh, that don't live in Las Vegas, I mean, it has been cold here, Al, as you know. Yes. Al's from California and make it a visit here for about a week. It has been cold. I'll tell you, it's been colder than uh, Goodnight Kiss with Kim Kardashian. That's how, that's how cold it's, it, it's been here. Anyway. How do you know? I, 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 that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Anyway, let me, uh, let me get right to uh, business here because we've got a lot of show for you tonight. Let me introduce my special guest. This gentleman is uh, a longtime journalist. He's an award-winning author, he's an editor, he's a lecturer, he's an historian, and of course, above all, he's a golfer. And as far as being a golfer, Al is known in the trade as being easy money. Okay? Let's give it up for a great guy, Mr. Al Barco, right now. All right, Al. Easy money. Easy money. What is your handicap, by the way? Well, it's gotten up to around a 10 or 11. Okay, so you're not that easy. Well, but I can't putt worth a damn. I don't even play for money anymore. No. Because I just can't do it. All right, well, you, you were a very amateur. You were, you were on the college team? I played in college, college. I, at Western Illinois. I played. We won the NAIA Small College National Championship. Okay. And I finished fifth. And, uh, and I played in the U.S. Amateur. Okay. So I was, you know, not You're bad. You're pretty good. Not bad. You, but, uh, so what happened? Well, Went I down had, the tubes. I what happened? I discovered ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Good for you, Al. My brother used to tell me when I was a kid, and all I did was hit balls, and, you know, going out to the golf course, he said, and they said, well, when's he going to have a girlfriend? He said, when, they, when he gets one, it looks like a two iron. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's good. We'll talk about it. But I'd that. rather have a nine iron. I, I, me too. Easier to hit. Anyway, there's a lot. There's a lot hey, of ways you can get a hold of myself and Al if you want to uh, uh, send in a question or whatever on the show. We've got email, and that is simply golf at vegasvideonetwork.com. Of course, we've got a toll-free number for you: one eight six six nine six six four five nine nine. We've also got uh, live chat. Just go on our homepage at vegasvideonetwork.com. Hit that live chat icon, enter into the live chat room, send us a question, send us a suggestion, send us a complaint, criticism, whatever we'd like to, uh, we'd like to hear from you. We're also all over the place on iTunes, as you know, we're huge on YouTube. You can find all of the shows. Also, Roku TV, which is very cool. You know about Roku? You can hook a little device up, get all of your favorite shows on the network here on your big screen at home. So you kick back with a can of beer, some popcorn or whatever. It is absolutely terrific. Friday Night Features, also on AM 1400 KSHP from 8 to 12 o'clock at night. They rerun all of the audio versions of the show uh, on radio there. So that's, uh, that's a lot of fun too. You can also get a hold of me uh, outside of the station also if you go to my website, lvgolfguru.com or Dennis loves L-U-V-S to golf.com. That's another couple of ways you can, uh, you can get a hold of us. So also uh, want to mention, you're familiar with Golfer's Guide, aren't you? Yes, I am. Golfer's Guide, largest golf publication in the country. It, of course, is published regionally, as you know. All right. uh, features all of some really, really good regional golf courses, whether they be private, resort courses, uh, muni courses, whatever. Got some great articles on instruction and all of that stuff. As you can see right there, all they are kind enough to stream 
uh, golf and other four-letter words on their homepage. Simply go to lasvegas.golfersguide.com. Check them out here uh, locally in the Southern Nevada area. They do a great job. We appreciate them uh, being connected with the show. Good a publication. A lot of good golf in Vegas now. A lot of good golf oh, in Vegas. Oh, man, I yeah. told you once, I think earlier, that I came to Vegas for the first time when I was stationed in the March, March Field on Riverside. Okay. And uh, it was 1953 or 54, and we took a drive up, and it was like two golf courses. I was going to say, you got to be one casinos. or two golf courses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But it was uh, what a what a change and uh, some really good golf. Yeah, we got some we got some good golf here now yeah. that uh, we talk about you know uh, throughout our our weeks here on the show. All right, time for our first segment for our regular viewers. They sure know what it is for our new viewers, and we hope you are many. Uh, we call this segment we're going to be doing with Al Barco tournament scorecard. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everybody, to uh, the show. Al Barco, Dennis Silvers, Golf and Other Four-Letter Words, Vegas Video Network, Tournament Scorecard. Here we go, Al, the number three-ranked player in golfdom, Mr. Lee Westwood, repeats at the Ned Bank Golf Challenge in Sun City. No, that's not the Sun City here in Las Vegas. At Sun City, South Africa, uh, helped by uh, posting a uh, score. Uh, a record, course record, yeah. 62. Oh, two it was. 62 it was, on yeah, Saturday. Yeah. Uh, wins $125 million, okay? Yeah. Uh, first place for the, for not bad, is it? It's not a bad four days. $25 million? I'm sorry, 1.25. 1.25 1. had the period Still. in the wrong place. Still. Yeah, it's a lot That's of money. Huge. Okay, it's a lot of Krugerrands or whatever they pay whatever. over there with. How about this? Uh, Mark Kalkovecchia wins the senior version of the Ned Bank Challenge. And you know what he wins for first place, Al? $250,000. Tell me, where's the equity, my friend? Well, he's an old guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's had his turn. He's had his. He's made enough money. All right, so <laughs> you know, I, All right, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Now, when I think about it, when I was a kid growing up in Chicago, and we had the Tam uh, Country Club, and they had these marvelous tournaments. Uh, George S. M. A. who was a great promoter of golf, and uh, he had a tournament, the he, two weeks of golf, uh, the All American, which was mm -hmm. pretty good purse, but the World Championship, the first prize was twenty five thousand dollars. Wow! And if you won that, you were like the leading money winner on the no tour kidding. for wow. the year. It was wow. incredible. That is incredible. And then Lou Warsham in nineteen fifty three, uh, it was the first. National broad, national telecast of a golf tournament live. Right. He hold a wedge for a two on a par four 18th hole to win the tournament and the $25,000. Incredible shot. George May, who was a great promoter, he comes out onto the green twirling his umbrella. He's all excited and all that. And he says, next year, first prize is 50 grand, 50,000 to win a tournament. Nowadays, money, it's yeah. walking around money yeah, for these it's, kids. It's airfare for these oh, guys. It, I know. Things have changed. Roy McIlroy, uh, number two in the world, uh, wins the Hong Kong Open, uh, helped by holding out from a greenside bunker on number 18 uh, in route to a two-shot victory over Gregory Havre from uh, France. And uh, so Ooh. congratulations, Rory. Oh. He keeps his, uh, his mo going for 2011. And I guess, Al, the story of the week, uh, probably the story of the year right now, Tiger Woods winning at the uh, Chevron World Challenge by just nipping Zach Johnson uh, for his first win in over two years. As you know, Tiger wins $1.2 million, had the decimal in the right place there, uh, <laughs> all donated to his uh, foundation. I'll tell you what, now, here's what really, really gets me, okay? Tiger wins in an event, a made-for-TV event, an 18-man field, and, and it wasn't that strong, in my opinion. Uh, Tiger gets 44 world ranking points. Rory McIlroy wins a full field event, some strong players there, only gets 38 world ranking points in a better, stronger field. Tell me what that's all about, and tell me how screwed up 
the world ranking point system. The world, is. the world ranking. Please, thing was, it was a it was a gimmick developed by Mark McCormick in order to promote his his clients. You know, he had right. at one time he had Nicholas Palmer who was his had first everybody. guy, and he cre he created this world ranking deal so that he could get some kind of uh, way to sell his guys. It's all cornball. It it doesn't. It doesn't mean anything to anybody. It doesn't. It has no, you know. It's like the uh, like the President's Cup. It's like, and frankly, my is my own view is the Ryder Cup. They're all exhibitions. They don't mean anything. And why these guys get so excited I, and nervous and whatnot? I say, why? You know, what the hell does it mean? Nothing. It's show. Yeah. There's, there, it's you all, know, yeah. you know, professional golf. All the show business, isn't right. it? Would you agree with that? Right. Oh, well, it is. But you know, I remember. Well, I remember asking Ben Hogan. Uh, I said, did you ever think of yourself as being in show business? No. He was absolute, you know, I am not an entertainer. I'm a professional golfer. Really? He, yeah, he wasn't, well, he wasn't in the show business. But nowadays it is, and it always has it been, really. Yeah, oh, I yeah. agree with you. But oh, anyway, yeah. can, uh, congratulations. And I say one turn, you know, a W is always great, but let's yeah. see what he does in Abu Dhabi in February up against a full field with some other good players where you probably have to shoot close to 20 under or better yeah. to win the damn thing. Right. Okay, so uh, for all you people that think Tiger's back, uh, don't go betting, you know, don't go betting the mortgage I, I on must, it yet. I must say, though, he did. He hold two good putts on the last yeah, two he holes. he a few putts. And he's been missing, you know, he's been missing a lot. Yeah, he made a few putts. Well, we'll but, see. you know, even you and I make a few putts now and then. <laughs> okay? The last one I made was 30 years ago. Was it really? <laughs> <laughs> but not to win $1.25 million. <laughs> I'm like, sure. But All right. Al and I are going to step away, take a short break here in golf and other four letter words. When we return, and we will, that's a promise. We'll get into our second segment. Birdies and bogeys, stay with us. We're back with you right after this. Traditional media believes that after about three minutes, you'll tune out. Most Vegas media companies think if it doesn't jiggle, you won't tune in. At the Vegas Video Network, we think both are wrong. The Vegas Video Network is the first and only live online broadcast network that specializes in insider news and expert views about Vegas. We combine great storytelling with the ability to watch when and where you want on your computer, mobile device, or television. Discover the real Las Vegas. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com. Birdies and bogeys right here on Golf and Other Four-Letter Words. Al Barco, author, lecturer, historian. Guy has done it all, okay? Dennis Silver is your host. Birdies or bogeys? Al, I'm going to give you some smack, some gossip, some rumors, whatever. Let me know what you think. If it's a birdie, a bogey, whatever oh, yeah. you think. Right. Speaking of the Chevron World Challenge that we just were, turns out that Chevron, Al, has decided not to renew its sponsorship of the event after four years. And since 1999, if memory serves me correctly, they've had no less than three different title sponsors. So I guess Chevron, what, just ran out of gas on this one. Oh. 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 Okay. I like All that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of love in this one. You want, what wow. do you want? You want a bogey birdie on that? You, you tell me what you think. Bogey, and I'll tell you why. Because when they had the guy, the president or whatever, CEO of Chevron on the other day, you know they do that thing where, uh, glad to have you oh, and all sure, the money's going here, blah, right. blah, blah. And he was uh, very effusive and we love what we're doing. We help these kids and now they drop it. Bogey. Yeah, but, okay, I, I could see that. But from a business standpoint, Al, I mean, this event cost them a lot of money. They, they really getting something out of it? Chevron? Yeah. Money? <sighs> Kidding me? <clears throat> okay. What am I paying for gas these days? <clears throat> More in California than we are yeah, here, my you're, friend. You're darn right. Okay, so you call Jerry Brown and say, Jerry, what's up? <laughs> so anyway, all right. Aussie tour player Jason Day. I'm sorry, Jason Dye. Jason Dye. That, was, that wasn't bad, was He's it? He's an Australian. He's a, right, yeah. That's Aussie. I, I said Aussie. They've Australian. got to learn to speak properly. I know. Australian. 24-year-old. is He's one of the best young players yeah, uh, playing one. the game today by far. Uh, when Jason was 12 years old, he lost his dad to, a, uh, to cancer. Now he hopes, this is, this is incredible, Al. Now he hopes to be able to fulfill one of his father's 
dying wishes, and that is to have his ashes spread over Augusta National this year. <laughs> Birdie or bogey? Oh, I, I'm not an Augusta fan. So, I mean, all that to me is a lot of... But if, he, if that makes him happy, good for him, but, Birdie. But like, give it a par. You give it a par. But you know 99% says Augusta's not going to allow it. You know that. Well, they can sneak it in there. Hey, I guess they could. You can come in with a little canister and... Just, just, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Dad. I got to push over here behind the. Oh, but I mean, it's it's. I I get sure you want to, you know, his dying wish and this and that. But Augusta National of all places, yeah. I don't even know if the guy's ever been there. Uh, Jason Day, I don't think has ever played the Masters or whatever. Why I don't Augusta? So. Well, that is, uh, just has some strange. Uh, yeah. Thing about Strength. people have about it, you know. All right, Bubba Watson, B -b 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 Bubba, is one of the most popular PGA Tour players around. You know that he's very hip, very laid back. Well, Bubba turns out has a a fan that is so enamored with him, Al, that this fan went out and got a big tattoo of Bubba on on his leg, on, on one of his legs. Wait, wait, wait. I, I say it's a bogey right now, but the only problem is, Al, with the tattoo, that he has Bubba holding a right-handed king driver <laughs> when Bubba's a left-hander. So, pretty stupid, isn't it? Hey, listen, I went, to, when they opened the World Golf Hall of Fame in Pinehurst, this is way back, Gerald Ford was the president, and I had dinner with Gerald Ford, me and about 350 other people, but... Um, they had a, 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 a huge statue or a sculpture of Bobby Jones. It was so big, it was way out of size. And you know, you can walk into a room and the thing is so big you don't see it. And, uh, and it, was, it was way out of proportion. But anyway, I looked at the thing and they had the club turned, the, head, the club head was turned in some odd way, you know, and the closers, I mean, really not golf not, way, no, that was and they didn't, enough. you know, they didn't know. Yeah, but I, this is, come on, <laughs> come on, if you're going to have a, you know, a, a tattoo of Bubba Watson, get the club right, get the club right, you know, get the club right. All right, finally, Rory McIlroy, we were talking about before, uh, is having trouble getting back his uh, trophy that he won this year for the U.S. Open. What do you mean? It's, well, it's being held by Chinese customs official when McElroy shipped it to show off at the Shanghai Masters. The USGA, IMG, and his representatives from Horizon Sports have all failed so far in attempts to get it back from the customs people in China. They're just holding it for him in storage. He took it. He was playing about four or five tournaments in China, so he wanted to show off the trophy, which, you know, I don't blame him for. So we had it shipped there uh, to Shanghai or something, and they haven't released it, and they're having a hell of a time getting it out of storage. You know what it takes? So, I don't know. Think so? Oh, absolutely. There's a great story. I remember a well, it's guy. It's a bogey for the Chinese people. Oh, it's people. absolutely a double bogey. Right? Oh, double, double bogey. bogey. Yeah. The, the with a film crew went to Spain. This was back in the 60s. The guy was making a movie, and he was, you know, it was big budget and all that. Couldn't get his cameras out of customs. And a week went by, and said, we're spending all this money. And finally, he, and they said, well, you got to give him a little dough. And the guy said, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. You know, he's going to be proper and all that. And finally, two weeks go by, and he's in a, you know, he's in a million dollars. He finally gives the guy... Uh, you yeah. know, some dough. He walks back, screened little, and the guy's sitting at a desk with a little green visor, and he gives them the money. Bingo, they got the camera. They got the camera. And that's yeah. all they'll need that's to do. That's all, yeah, and certainly Rory could afford it, you think? No. Yeah, well, not he shouldn't have to pay it. Shouldn't have to, yeah, I agree. That's terrible. All right, I'll tell you what, you know, normally we have our third segment called Handicap Helper, but uh, being that uh, Al is not a professional player. You know, he's got his own way of doing things. We thought we'd mix things up a little bit and change it up because Al is such an historian of the game. I've got some questions for you, Al, that I think uh, our audience, me, I know our viewers would, I think, be very, very interested in. So I want to run through these quickly and uh, and get kind of a quick answer from you because we've got a we've got a number of them. Well, you know what? Before we do that, I'll tell you what. Let's gear up. Let me go over what I've got here. Let's take a quick break, Al, and when we come back, 
will have a little, a little time, a little locker room time, a little locker room chat with Al Barco. So stay tuned. We're going to be back right after this. I'm Courtney Leone. This is Vegas Video Network. You want me to mention awkward silence? Let's do that then. Okay. Never been on set here before. I'm always out live on location for Awkward Silence 2.1. I'm Courtney Leone, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. I'm good? Better? Okay, welcome back, everybody. Time for a little uh, session with uh, Al Barco. Al, your main focus in your uh, journalistic work uh, has been golf. Yeah. But you've also written on subjects like uh, tennis, uh, boxing, baseball, even food. Uh, any parallels in any of those subjects? Baseball and golf are very, uh, there's a lot of connection there. Uh, and actually in tennis as well. There was a fellow named Frank Connor right. who played out on the tour for a while yep. and then played senior golf. And Frank was a, he played in the National, in tennis yeah. open first. And I remember he came around, his agent came around and said, we want to do a book connecting baseball and tennis, or rather golf and tennis. And I said, um, ah, what are you talking about? And, but then he talked to me, we talked about it, and I said, yeah, you're right. Forehand and backhand, there, there's a lot of similarities in the weight shifting and all of that. And I said, you know, you've got something here. And we did it, but we never yeah. got it published because he fell out of and that's the reason that, uh, that Al is actually here in Las Vegas, because you're currently working on a book about baseball. Yeah, and it's yeah. going to be fun. Oh, the relationship between pitchers and catchers. Yep. And, uh, and, and all the baseball has a terrific literature, you know. There's a lot of yeah. books on baseball. Yeah, there are. And no one has ever touched on that that's subject. That's interesting. And all the ball players I've talked to, they love the subject, and they... I've, and they really go on about it. Yeah, right? well, it is a special kind of oh, relationship. Yeah. I'm surprised you haven't done a thing on bowling. Because people I've talked to <laughs> said, you you know, you hit the ball like you're bowling. <laughs> How do you hit the ball? I don't know. Well, it just never gets airborne. You I just, know. You just make it all these windsheet. I'm making that up. All right. <laughs> uh, you've collaborated, really, with some of the real icons in the game of golf and writing some instructional books, specifically. People like uh, Billy Casper, Ken Venturi, Phil Rogers, uh, Dave Stockton, all previous guests of mine on my show. Uh, was there, Al, a, a commonality amongst these people that you saw uh, that made them the standouts they are? Any kind of a passion or, or some kind of commonality? In their instruction or how they played? Uh, both. No, it's, an Both. it's an interesting subject. We were, I was talking about that today with someone. What makes a Tiger Wood, what makes the player a little better than the rest of the field? And you know, there's almost no answer for it. There's something that goes on within a guy's psyche. With yeah. Something happens that makes him another level up, uh, uh, up above everyone else. They like to say he wants it more. Well, everybody wants everybody it. Wants you know, the wants it, it yeah. thing yeah. is, you know, the pitcher wants this right. curveball. Of course. Everybody wants everything. But there's something, Jack Nicholas. there's a marvelous story about Jack. Tom Weiskopf told me Jack was a great putter. And um, he had a pretty important putt, like a six-footer in the Ryder Cup. It was a big putt. It was a tight match. And... Uh, Jack asked Weisskopf, what do you think? Because Jack never asked anybody, including caddies. He read, everything was his deal, you know. But he asked Tom. Tom was a little surprised. He asked him. He said, I think inside left, blah, blah, blah. And he hits the putt. It goes down, almost disappears, comes back out. And Weisskopf says, how did that stay out? This is that, right. I tell you. And Jack, you know what Jack said? I made the putt. It just didn't go in. It just in. didn't go in. That's interesting. <laughs> that's really good. And that's, see, that's the level that those guys that, think Those think, uh, yeah. totally. We've yeah. got uh, Scott somebody on live chat. Yeah, Al, Nate wants to know, are there any current players that you think will stand up to the greats of the past? Uh, no. Um, in part because they're, they make so much money now that they don't have to, they don't have to keep at it. Uh, even Jack, in his, in his time, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of dough in it. And you had to oh, keep right, playing. Right. And you had to play had hard. To, right. And Trevino and all those guys, I mean, they were, they were out making a living. And, um, and I remember even asking Ben Hogan, you know, they used to say, you just play for the championships. He said, no, you got to eat. 
<laughs> but nowadays, it, one and a quarter million for winning a tournament. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, it's it's a different thing. So I don't know that there'll be another a player at that level. Uh, only for that reason, and for another thing, there, they don't seem to be. Um, they're all they're all into swing and technique with the gurus and the psychologists and whatever. And the old guys, the great players. You know, nobody, Hogan never asked anybody anything. Yeah. And Jack, you know, I mean, they, they knew, just played. Yeah. They knew how to play. Yeah. And these kids nowadays don't seem to have that. Yeah, very and mechanical, very It's structured. all mechanical, yeah. and so they're not, yeah. they don't have the drive yeah. to reach that I, level. I agree with that. I think, that. I think that's well said. You became the uh, chief writer and co-producer of the Emmy Awards show, one of my favorites as a kid, uh, Shell's Wonderful World of oh, Golf yeah. television show. Uh, what was groundbreaking, Al, about that show? And if you had it to do over, what one or two things would you do differently in doing that show? Gee, that's a, uh, that's hard to say. It was groundbreaking because one, it was in color, color television. Right. This was 1962, you know. And as a matter of fact, the first series was done by NBC, it was on NBC, and they didn't have color capability. And, and, they, and Shell Oil Company wanted it in color, so they went, I believe it was CBS, and they, kept, and they ran it for a long time because they had color. And uh, so that was part of it. But the, but the biggest part was uh, we played golf all over the world. I mean, in Greece. Yeah. And who knew that there was a golf, there's still only the one golf course in Greece, but I mean, we played in Luxembourg, we played in, Thailand, we played in Singapore, and it opened up a whole, the whole business of, of world golf, and people could yeah. travel to play golf in different parts of the yeah. world. That was a big great part point. of it. That yeah. is a, that is a, a that's but differently, a great, you know, that we were very innovative in, in terms of uh, camera technique. Uh, we had a guy, an Australian, Bob Wright, who was the, he was on the tower. He brought the ball in, you know, the, he'd pick it up early. And that was a hard shot. Uh, in the early days, you know, before they right. knew. And he, he, had, he developed techniques for picking up the ball and following it all the way to the green. And he and he'd learned a way to do it. He, he put a, um, a, larger, a larger next to his eyepiece so that he could see the ball better and he, you know, coordinated it so he had the ball in the, in the center of the frame. And, um, and he was great. I remember we were playing in Spain and they had a 10,000 bucks for a hole in one. And Miguel Sala, he was a Spanish player playing Frank Beard, I think it was. And he made a hole in one. And uh, I walk it up to the green, I look up to Bob Wright, I, you know, did you get it? I said, got, got it. it. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. But, he, yeah. but they were very innovative. And the they guys who came after yeah. that learned, learned a uh, lot. how to do that. Yeah. Real quickly, because we're just about out of time, best match you ever saw on Shell's Wonderful World of Golf, you think? Lima and Di Vincenzo in Greece, as I mentioned earlier, they had great, it was great golf. And uh, they were great competitors, and, uh, and it was, uh, Tony Lima was wonderful to yeah. watch. Champagne Tony, yeah. uh, Tony Lima. How could people uh, get a hold of you in the sense of, of getting some of the great books and novels that uh, you have written, and when's the new one coming out? I've got a book coming out in March called Golf's All-Time Book, uh, list of first, most, least, and a few nevers. I think yeah, I love it. That. Yeah, that'll be out in March, and that's a fun book. I mean, it's got a lot of uh, uh, boilerplate. Yeah. You know, first winner of the Illinois Amateur, and so forth and so on. But there's also other things and histories. And I have one of my favorites is uh, most asked, never answered question in golf. And it's how did that ball stay, stay out? out? That's great. <laughs> that is perfect. That is perfect. But a website then, or anything that they could go to? Yeah, albarco.com. Okay. And I have a book on putting, by the way, an e-book. Uh, it's called Dominant Hand Putting, Right Hand Putting. And uh, you putt with your dominant hand if you're left-handed. That's the one that really does all the right. work. And uh, you can get that, uh, albarco on putting. Okay. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah. All right. There you, there you got it. Great job, my man. You done? Wish we had about three hours for this, but we're going to have to uh, we're going to have to get you back. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for Al and I on this edition of Golf and Other Four Letter Words, right here on the Vegas Video Network. Got a great, great show coming up for you. We're going to do it live uh, on Friday, 9 a.m. 
uh, with Mr. Bill Engvall. Very funny guy, very avid golfer. He's appearing over at Treasure Island. So we get a hope uh, you get a chance to tune in. That's 9 o'clock Friday morning. So we want the coffee and donuts right here. Okay. Until then, everybody, thanks for hanging with us for 30 minutes. We'll see you uh, again next show. Fairways and greens to everybody. And uh, don't forget that Christmas holiday shopping. And if you need any of my sizes or whatever, just give me a call. I'm glad to help out. So long, everybody. Have a good one.